Thank you for your patience and cooperation. The warning will be given in a few moments. Hello YouTube and welcome, Frick here, and I've got another flight for you for my Let's Play Flight Simulator X FS Passengers video series. In this flight, we are going to be going from KDLH, or Duluth International Airport in Duluth, Minnesota, crossing a few parts of Lake Superior to almost the northernmost portion of the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, as we are flying to KCMX, or Houghton County Memorial Airport in Houghton, Michigan. Now I do have a few things to note about this flight. First of all, this is not my first time doing it. I actually had an entire video recorded of me flying from Duluth to Houghton. Unfortunately, my recording software decided to record my secondary display as opposed to my primary display that has the game, so the flight was all for naught. So I actually flew all the way back to Duluth International just so I could re-record this flight for you, so the next time I had a YouTube video, it wasn't at a random airport that you never saw me fly to. Another thing to note is it is a morning flight. As you can see, it's about 5 in the morning right now. Uh, it is dark outside, and as you can hear, there is a little bit of weather. The weather is coming from the west, and we are going to be heading east, so we should be able to be ahead of it the entire time. Uh, also, once we're about halfway to Houghton, we should start to see the sunrise, and by the time we get to Houghton Airport, uh, it should be relatively light out. Another thing to note is I have started my checklists. Uh, when I first got into the airplane, it was completely dark. So if I were to turn off my panel lighting, you can see how dark it is. Uh, and so instead of having you stare at a completely dark uh, aircraft, I decided to go through some of my checklists. So I'm about halfway through my pre-start checklist. Since I've been running on batteries, I do want to get the engine started because yes, in FSX, you can run out of juice for your batteries. Uh, and I don't want that to happen because it does happen relatively quickly in the game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and finish my pre-start checklist, go into FS Passengers, start boarding passengers, and get my engine started as quickly as possible. So as always, if you do want to follow along in the checklists, I do have a link to the checklist that I am using in the description box below. With that said, I'm going to be halfway through my pre-start checklist. So as you can see, the battery switch is already on and the panel lights are already on. Flight controls, I've already checked them. They are free and correct. Uh, flaps, we should look, and they are up. Fuel quantity is relatively low. We're going to be topping that off a little more in FS passengers. Also, if we look down here, the fuel selector valve is at both. Avionics switch, as you can see, is on, and I've got my avionics panel set. Uh, check weather and request clearance. I'm going to do that once I get my ATIS information, once I start boarding passengers. Transponder, I can't turn the knob to standby, but it is on 1200. And as always, my beacon, which you can see down here, is on. So that, in our, all of my uh, pre-start checklist is complete. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into FS Passengers. And before I actually start my flight, I'm going to go into my company manager and quick show you that my funds are a lot higher than they were in my last flight. If I go into my pilot section, you can see that he's got 14 flights. Uh, like I said, <laughs> a one of those flights was a flight to Houghton, Michigan, and then back to Duluth uh, that I had to re that I'm re-recording. The rest of those were tour flights around the Duluth area. I'm trying to earn a little extra cash so that way I can sell my default Cessna 172 and get a little more interesting of a plane. It's still going to be a smaller GA aircraft, but I'm looking at probably using one of the aircraft by Carinado or something like that. That's not a default FSX plane, uh, so you can see something a little more unique, a little more interesting. With that as well, you can also see that his rank is instrument rating, uh, so he's actually gone from a student pilot to a private pilot to now instrument rating uh, all through those uh, tour flights, so I'm sorry that you never got to see him rank up, but he is now an instrument rated pilot. The next thing uh, that you will get, I believe, is going to be a um, commercial license now the game is kind of silly because technically you're not allowed to charge people to fly with you if you don't have your commercial rating so just as an instrument rated pilot you know whatever technically we couldn't do what we are doing but we are doing it anyway i think it's just uh the rank that the game gives it's not realistic in that sense so i'm going to go ahead and close that the next thing i'm going to do is go into fs passengers and start my flight 
So start flight, and as you can see, we have two passengers who are ready and willing to fly with us. So I'm going to hit OK. Then I am going to go ahead and cabin. There are two people that are going to be flying with us. Um, also, another thing I learned is I want to give a shout out to Nolan Manley. He kind of pointed out that uh, the luggage down here is not how many items of luggage, but it is pounds of luggage. And the more pounds you uh, put into your aircraft, the more cargo uh, that you get paid for. So uh, it's advantageous to you to not necessarily fill up your fuel all the way to 100%, uh, but lower your total amount of fuel and actually uh, put in a little more cargo. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually only going to put about 50 pounds of fuel. Hopefully that's enough. It, it should be enough to, to get me to Houghton, Michigan. It's not a very far flight. Uh, it's only going to be about 180 miles, so that should be good. The heavier aircraft weight, though, does burn more fuel, so... Um, yeah, we'll just keep an eye on it. <laughs> I haven't done any flight planning to see how many fuel pounds of fuel I'm going to be burning, but I'm assuming I'm going to be burning probably about 80 to 90 pounds of fuel. Uh, with that said, I'll still have about 60 pounds in the reserves, so I should be relatively good if I need to deviate. The rest of uh, my weight, what I'm going to do then is do this cargo luggage. Uh, and as you can see, I have an aircraft current load that is increasing, so I'm going to load this up pretty uh pretty good and you can see that eventually you do exceed your weight so i'm just going to pull back my cargo a little bit so i'm going to have 261 pounds of cargo in my tiny little cessna 172 along with two passengers who must be relatively light which you can see they are 150 pounds and 100 and well both of them are relatively close to 150 pounds uh, i have to say i had one tour flight where one of my passengers was 120 pounds, and the other one, I think it said it was 340. Now, I'm a 200-pound guy, and I find it difficult to, you know, fidget around and move inside a Cessna 172. They're pretty small aircraft. The cabins are quite tiny. Uh, you're elbow to elbow with the person next to you. So, a uh, 340-pound guy, first of all, getting into the aircraft and into the back seat would have been a challenge, and props to him for doing that. Uh, unfortunately, uh, my center of gravity I'll have to admit was a little off on that flight because he was on the pilot site and needless to say my aircraft wanted to turn to the left the entire time but we did it we did it and uh, he must have enjoyed the flight so I've got 50 uh, percent of fuel two passengers 261 pounds I'm going to set my destination as KCMX KCMX and as you can see that's Houghton County Memorial Airport so I'm going to go destination okay. set thank you British lady I'm going to hit normal flight because we are going from one departure location to a new arrival location so they're two separate airports so I have that set flight and aircraft settings I'm not doing anything with that so I am ready for real-time load. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that. It's going to take me two minutes, and as always, I have to hit Shift-E to open the door. All of this is relatively the same. The speeds might be a little different because I am at 100% weight. Also, you can see my center of gravity. Instead of being the normal 10%, is at about 14%. So whatever. Uh, it will be all right. So I'm going to go ahead and start flight and open my cabin doors shifty and we'll see that my passengers are boarding with that said i'm going to go right away into my startup checklist as they are boarding so startup checklist engine propeller area clear all clear all clear passengers i don't want to chop you up with my rotating propeller so i yelled that out the window throttle i'm going to go down and crack about a quarter of an inch mixture i'm going to put to full rich fuel pump switch uh, I'm gonna just turn that on and have it priming for a little bit and then I'm gonna turn that off because in real life sometimes you don't need that on the whole time because in a way that acts as your fuel primer uh, magneto starter switch I'm gonna go ahead and start that and as you can see my propeller is spinning my engine is running you can hear the baby purr so I'm gonna pull back my throttle to idle alternator switch we just want to verify that that is on right now which you can see it is and my fuel pump is off next thing i'm going to look at is enunciator lights which you see nothing on right now but chances are my oil pressure which is right there is going to come on uh, and that's just because i'm idle 
Also, I'm going to be looking at my other engine instruments and my oil pressure and amp meter. So I can see my amp meter is showing that I'm getting a positive charge. My oil pressure is still a little low as is the temperature. The engine is just warming up. Those will start to rise. Same with my EGT or exhaust gas temperature and fuel flow. And I have 50% fuel in both wings. So startup checklist is complete. So I'm ready for my before startup checklist. So what I'm going to do uh, actually right now is I'm going to check my ATIS information. So I'm going to switch to COM1 and I've already programmed in my frequency. So I'm going to turn to this 124.1 for ATIS. Hello, airport information, Victor. 1003 Zillow. Wind 181.5. Visibility greater than 20 miles. Sky condition. No clouds below 200,000. Alright, so we have our ATIS information, Victor. Winds are 181 at 5, so we're going to be doing a runway 9er uh, takeoff. Also, um, ceiling is basically a non factor for us. It's at 20,000 feet. Altimeter, 3021. So I'm going to go ahead and put 3021 in here. You can hear that thunder and lightning, but again, we should still be ahead of it. Technically, we are still, based off the ATIS information, in VFR conditions, as this is this flight is going to be, so I'm hoping that I stay ahead of the weather. In real life, I probably wouldn't go if I had weather coming in, but uh, since it is a video game and I technically can stick to uh, visual flight rules, I am going to be doing that. So we have our ATIS information. Next, I'm going to go into the before taxi checklist, so I'm going to go down here and turn on my nav lights and my taxi lights. Heading indicator and altimeter. As you can see, uh, my altimeter I've set. My heading indicator, uh, I actually I changed my heading bug down here to uh, easterly heading, which is what I'm going to be going. I'm hope not east. Yeah, easterly. It's going to be a 095 heading, relatively, that I want to be flying. So you can see that that is set. Uh, instruments, everything is kind of checked out. You can see that we're facing south on the heading indicator. You can also see that the compass is showing that we're facing south, and we'll also check that in the taxi. Radios and avionics, if I come down here, they are all set. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be dropping my autopilot to 5500. That's what I plan to cruise at initially. Uh, transponder is still at 1200. DME is set for NAV2, where if you look at my NAV2 frequency, it's 112.6, which is the Duluth VOR. Uh, also, you can see that the next one I'm going to be connecting to is 108.8, which is Ironwood VOR, which is going to be my first VOR intersection point. Uh, and then you can see that 112.8 is the VOR for Houghton, and 110.3 is actually going to be the ILS information for Houghton. Again, I don't ever plan on using the ILS to land on this flight since it is going to be VFR flight rules. However, I use it more as a reference uh, just to make sure, you know, when I'm further out, I'm on the glide slope or that I'm aligned with the runway. So again, I don't rely on it. I'm not using it technically. It is more as a reference tool. Uh, with that, you can see that all of these are set. If I look at my comm channels, I'm on one one or one two one decimal nine, which is the ground frequency. If I were to pull that up, you can see it's ground. One two four decimal one is ATIS, and one one eight decimal three is tower. And then this one is going to be what I tune to uh, Duluth approach once I get released from tower. So with that said, we are good on that. So I'm going to request taxi clearance to depart to the east. Duluth Brown, Papa Hotel, Quebec, 05, with whiskey. Request taxi for takeoff, east departure. Papa Hotel, Quebec, 05, taxi to and hold short of runway 9 or using taxiway Alpha. Contact tower on 118.3 when ready. Alright, so they also said that we have a new uh, ATIS information, or my pilot did, said that we had whiskey, which the last one I got was Victor, so we might listen to that, but I'm going to acknowledge that taxi clearance. Alright, so we got our taxi information, I'm just going to flip and listen to the new ATIS information. 
sky condition, no clouds below 20,000. Temperature 202.3, altimeter 3021 ILS, runway 9 in use. Landing in the park. Alright, everything is the same, so as you can see I turned down my fasten seatbelt sign and also shift E. We will be main exit door closing, which it is. So what I am going to do is I'm going to hit control P to turn off my parking brake. And I am then going to hit shift P. And as you can see, this is a pushback uh, button. So I now have a pushback going on for uh, my aircraft. Uh, normally with a Cessna like this, I would just kind of turn it around. But since I am at the gate so tight to the, uh, to the terminal and other buildings and cars and stuff, I am going to use a pushback. Also, I'm going to hit Shift P Office right now, which I guess it works out. Also, I am not seeing my uh, taxi lights on, <laughs> which they're not showing. So I'm actually going to turn on Progressive Taxi because I cannot see where I'm supposed to go because my lights aren't on the runway. So what I need to do is turn. So what I'm going to do, actually, uh, this is a cool little trick. If I hit Shift P again for a pushback and then hit 1, what that should do is turn my tail to the left. As you can see, I needed to go the opposite direction. And so I did that. I hit Shift P and then hit 1 right away. And you can see that that's a pushback with turning your tail. And this should turn us to the direction we need to go, which uh, you can kind of see it is. So what I'm going to do is hit shift P again, that concludes my pushback, and I'm going to start giving it a little throttle, and we are going to be going to where we need to go. Now we're going to be using runway niner, so we're going to be taking off straight to the east, which is nice, uh, that I don't have to, uh, normally I believe their primary is 27, but they don't want people taking off into the weather, I assume, so um, that is why we'd be taking off to the east. As you can see, you can see kind of that weather out in this direction, uh, like I said, it is west of us, so we should be well ahead of it uh, throughout the entire flight. Also, I'm not sure, but I'm going to turn on my landing light. I'm not sure if we're going to get penalized for this. I lost where I was going. <laughs> the downside to uh, taxiing while you're looking at your panel lights in this game. Anyway, I turned on my, uh, my landing light. I'm not sure if I'm going to get penalized for using the improper lighting, but now at least the taxiway is illuminated. I can see where the center line is and where I'm supposed to go, hopefully. The wind is coming out of the south. It is 181 at 5, so we, it is going to be a slight crosswind takeoff, but it's only 5 knots, so it should almost be a non-factor for the most part. will push us a little bit to the north. Ground, Piper, November 80047 with Whiskey. Request taxi for takeoff. Piper, November 80047. Taxi 2 and hold short of runway 9 or via taxiway Alpha. Contact tower on 118.3 when ready. As you can see, we are on taxiway Contact Alpha. Uh, yellow on black is where you're alpha. at, uh, is Piper, how I remember seven. it. So the yellow on black sign was uh, for Alpha. Black on yellow, um, I don't have a cool saying for where that takes you, but I'm assuming that is going to take you to, uh, well, I'm not assuming, that takes you to where it's indicating. So if it's saying, you know, an arrow to the right takes you to Alpha 3, yeah, that's what I used to remember, uh, taxiway, what, what taxi I am on, because the game was modeled after the real airport, so uh, the taxiways are the same, which is nice. So if you use a real world airport diagram, as long as it wasn't updated within the last uh, 10 years or so, you definitely should be able to use it because then uh, uh, that's what the game was modeled after. You can see we're still on uh, taxiway Alpha. Roger, Taxi, my aircraft just constantly wants to 
go to the left. I'm not sure what I have my settings on for like torque and p-factor, but I'm having to uh, put rudder in and differential brake a lot to uh, just keep myself relatively centered. That's not using any, and you can see how much it's wanting wanting to turn, so I'm fighting with it a little bit. But that is alright. We'll, we'll be fine. Finally, we are getting towards the end of the taxiway so we can be able to uh, contact Tower and request our departure. I'm gonna start slowing down, turning to the left. As you can see, I'm still on yellow on black is where you're at, and that's alpha and nine, the white on red, is uh, the runway. So we're at runway nine. So I'm going to stop at the hold short line, which I can see here. I'm going to hit him control P before taxi checklist is complete. Taxi checklist is also complete. I just never vocalized it. But during that, you're checking maybe the heading indicator to make sure it matches up with the compass. You're checking your turn coordinator and your artificial horizon and things like that. Uh, before takeoff checklist is where I'm at now. So parking brake, I have turned on. Fuel quantity, you can see, is still at about 50%. Fuel selector valve is at both, throttle is at idle, mixture is at full rich. Alternator switch, if we come down here, we can verify that it is still on. So what I'm gonna do is my engine run up, I'm gonna put my throttle to about 1800 RPM, which you can see it coming up on the tachometer right down here. So it's about 1800 RPM. So what I'm gonna do now is check my magneto. So if I uh, take both and go to left, See about a 50 uh, RPM drop in the tachometer. Bring it back to both and you should see that come up so we know that the left magneto is working. Go to the right. And about another 50% or 50 RPM, not 50% drop, but RPM. And bring it back to start. So we both know now that both the left and right uh, magnetos are working and if you're unfamiliar with magnetos, basically they're little generators uh, that kind of go around the they kind of go around the, the spark plug and provide redundancy. So if, if your electrical systems were to completely shut out in your aircraft, your aircraft engine would still function as you would have these old, these generators that are uh, working your spark plugs. Also, if one were to go out, it does uh, kill a little bit of your power in your engine. As you can see, when I turned off one of those, uh, then it would drop the engine performance by about 50 RPM. With that said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and idle my checklist. Also, I could see my ammeter was at a positive charge, so I'm going to be uh, checking that too during the engine run up. Next thing I'm going to do is oil temperature. We'll check that, and all my gauges, everything is in the green, so we're going to. Uh, just do a quick cross check of everything, which everything is good. Flaps, we're going to turn that to 10 degrees. Holy cow, the ground frequency is lit up with chatter. Flaps are at 10 degrees. Flight controls are still free and correct. Radios and avionics, I've already had set. Landing lights, I have those on, but I'm going to go ahead and turn off my taxi lights, and I'm also going to turn on my strobe light. Pedo heat sensor is moisture nearby. I am going to turn that on. Transponder is still on at 1200, and I'm going to request takeoff clearance. So I'm going to be switching away from this annoying ground frequency and request takeoff clearance VFR from Duluth. Alright, so we are cleared for takeoff. Everything should be good. Still 3021 set, which is the latest uh, information. You can see us hopping onto the runway. Runway lighting is cool. I just think airport lighting in general is pretty cool. Apparently there's lightning out there, so this might be a stupid, stupid flight that I am doing, but it shouldn't be out there, but we're, we're doing it anyway. We're pressing because the weather is not supposed to be there, and I want to get to Houghton again, so here we go. We're going to start our takeoff, so throttle is going to be increased to full, 1, 1,000, 2, 2,000, 3, 3,000, and we are going to start going down the runway, not turning. Stop that. All right, here we 
we go. Wow, this thing now wants to turn to the right. I do hate these aircraft sometimes. All right, so we're at 65 knots. We're gonna begin Nine, our tower, rotate. November, eight, zero, zero, four, seven, ready there we go. Niner, south departure. Hyper November 800047, taxi to position and hold. Position and hold, Hyper 047. Flaps are coming up now that we uh, are off the ground. Try to establish a better climb. We're uh, really starting to deviate away from that runway, which technically I do not want to do, so I'm going to turn and try to get back on it. Because till you're at the end of the runway, you usually want to stay on that runway heading at least. Uh, that's just for traffic pattern purposes, so we're kind of getting back on it. <clears throat> you can see a few clouds here that were not announced on the ATIS information. We're basically following the heading that we want, so I'm going to turn on my autopilot and heading hold, but I'm going to turn on altitude hold and then switch it back off, because sometimes it tries to, uh, to do the altitude uh, climb even though it is off, and I don't want that. I want to manually do it. Uh, so as you can see we are on that 095 heading here's that radial we want to intercept which is that 095 radial from uh, the Duluth VOR uh, and that should take us to our first VOR intersection, which is the uh, Ironwood VOR As you can see it is off to the right of us um, We're past it so it, since it's showing that from flag so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to change my heading to about a zero, I didn't want that much, 105 heading uh, roughly, and hopefully that should start taking us a little more south of that uh, VOR line to hopefully start to intercept that radial where we can turn back onto a 095 heading. With that, we are on our climb out checklist. Uh, throttle is roughly at 2300, what you can see. Mixture is still at full rich. Autopilot is checked and set. Landing lights, uh, it says to turn them off. I'm not gonna turn them off because as we noticed on our last flights, uh, that <laughs> FS passengers wants you to have them on at any flight below 10,000 feet. Airspeed is relatively close to 80 knots, which you can see in our climb out rate is at about 700 feet. It's at 800, but still pretty good. So uh, we are doing good on our climb out checklist. ATC is as required. Uh, we're gonna just keep uh, heading out this direction and eventually they are gonna give us a call to contact Duluth Approach. So we're just kind of waiting for that. Also, we're still in our climb trying to get to 5,500. You are leaving my airspace. Frequency change approved. One two five four five, which is right there. Got a little bit of uh, adrenaline through turbulence as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this. Going to request a flight following. Approach. <clears throat> Hotel. Come back zero five. This type Cessna Skyhawk four miles east of Duluth. Request flight following. They're going to give me a squawk number. Also, so I'm going to try to acknowledge that radar contact.
you don't notice too, what I am doing is I'm turning. As you can see, there are clouds straight ahead of us, and we do not want to fly directly into those clouds. Technically, we probably do not want to fly in this at all. This might have been a very bad idea to uh, take off. Because this weather is not indicating at all what the ATIS information said. So I am also descending as well, uh, and we can still see these clouds out to the left. Or the right. Yeah, this uh, weather definitely is not as, uh, it's not what it was supposed to be. So, in real life, and what I'm going to do in the game, uh, because we try to make this as realistic as possible, is we are going back to our home base, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit nearest airport list, Duluth International, Duluth Tower, uh, which it automatically connected me now to the Duluth Tower, and I'm going to request Duluth a full stop Tower, landing. Hotel, Quebec, zero five, this eight miles east with X-ray to land. Office Hotel, Quebec, zero five, Duluth Tower, flight right, downwind, runway nine, altimeter three zero zero six. Three zero zero six. Also, what I'm going to do while we're doing this is I'm going to quick uh, acknowledge my pattern instructions. I'm going to go to COM1 and listen to the new x-ray. Alright, with that you can just see how uh, fail ATIS information is. No clouds be below 20,000, which is 20,000. And as you can see, there are clouds at uh, 2,000. So, and below that, because it looked like some of those behind us were going all the way, like right there, you can see them, that they're uh, getting cut off by the lake. So... Uh, fail on whoever is providing weather to me. That's, you know, why I thought I could do this flight was simply because uh, the weather was supposed to be out to the west and the ATIS information said that it was all clear. And obviously it is not. So in real life, what I would do, uh, you, you simply just cannot fly through this or through this uh, weather when you are flying VFR. It is something that should not happen, and um, yeah, we're not going to do it. So my company is actually going to get docked points because I am landing not at my departure airport, or my arrival airport. I am landing still at the departure airport. I apologize, but I am deviating because of weather. Um, the weather, again, wasn't supposed to be like this. So probably what I'm going to do is I am just going to land i'll cut the video and bring you right back with a brand new flight and we'll try it again with hopefully clearer weather that is my plan and now as you can see looking out the window we are in rain as well so it'll be a good thing to uh land this aircraft you can see that the adrenaline and fear is actually going away Uh, because the rain just magically stopped right there, so it's, I guess a good thing to call out <laughs> the weather and it'll it'll magically stop. All right, so you can see Duluth International Airport right here. We're cleared to land on runway nine. We got to enter right traffic, and I'm in the process of entering left traffic. Fail me. So what I need to do is get to the left side. Uh, you can see this is runway 27 right there, which is not the runway that we want to be taking off from. So I gotta actually turn around because we're entering right downwind.
when they give you information, uh, so right downwind or left downwind, uh, it's saying to enter the downwind leg of the traffic pattern. And we're almost entering right here at the wrong spot because we are almost, you could uh, say, ah, uh, where are we? You could almost say we're on like the crosswind. Anyway, we're going to be entering at a 45 degree angle into the traffic pattern. Uh, and then since it is the right down one, basically what that's saying is a traffic pattern is right turns. Uh, so that's what right downwind means. We're going to enter the downwind leg uh, with right turns. Uh, where if it was left downwind, we would enter technically on the right side of the airport. Uh, and you would be entering uh, with left turns for left downwind. So what I'm doing, as you can see, is this isn't the greatest uh, entrance into the traffic pattern because... I should be coming a little more off in this direction, almost following that road, because you want to intercept it at a 45 degree angle. We're still a little far out, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn in towards the airport now, because you can see the runway that down here that we want to land on. We're going to enter the traffic pattern at about this 45 degree angle, which you can kind of see we're doing right now. Then I'm going to align myself pretty much with this road that's right here where you can see the traffic down there. And there I am. So I am I'm on the downwind portion of the uh, traffic pattern right now. So if I go wings level, look out my right side, you should see that pretty much parallel to us. Now what I'm going to do, we're a little tight for it, but that'll be alright. I can't really see it, so I'm going to have to guess, rock the wings once. Almost to the end of the airport, what I'm looking for is the beam point, which is basically where it is, which we're coming up right now, uh, and that's where I'm going to hit my first degree of flap, so we're pretty much at that right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my first degree of flaps, we're flying at 80 knots, we're going at a good speed in the traffic pattern. Uh, that's going to slow us down now some. A thousand feet. So we're about a thousand feet above uh, the airport, which is perfect for entering the traffic pattern as well. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for where the runway starts is about three-fourths between my tail and my wing. That's what I want to get. As you can see, these clouds are really starting to lower uh, as well. So it is definitely a good thing we are not flying this. Um, what I can tell you, if I look at this, which you can see right here, which is my Rex weather, all the weather is out to the west. Uh, Duluth is right here. So I did not think clouds would be here uh, right now, but apparently they are. So I'm entering the base now, base leg of my... Uh, traffic pattern. I'm going to put in another detent of flaps. And I'm only going to do two degrees of uh, flaps, I think, this time, since we do have a little bit of a crosswind. I do want to be able to have a, a relatively decent climb out, if possible. Um, I can't see the runway. There it is. As you can see, I am low, but we're getting a little better. There we go. There's trees up there, and I want to get above them, so we're going to try to climb a slight little bit above those trees, align with this runway. I kind of overshot that, which threw off my... Uh, expectations for my landing still below the glide slope and we do have those trees so we got to kind of climb up this is not the greatest landing at all there we go all right runway lighting is blinding me holy cow and there's trees right below me 
see, I do not have my aircraft trimmed for this. Give it a little bit of rudder. A little bit. There we go. Not the best landing. I'm not entirely happy with that one, but that is all right. I will, uh, I will take it because it is safe at least. We're safely down. I'm working on it. There's a taxiway right here that I plan on taking. Man, my controls today are just jerky as can be. Office Hotel, Quebec, 05, contact ground on 121.9er. 121.9er. One, 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 Acknowledge ground handoff. One, two, one, point, niner for Papa Hotel, Quebec, Gonna turn one point, or one, two, one point, niner there, and COM1. We're gonna request tax into the gates. Papa Hotel, Quebec, 05, request taxi to the gates. <coughs> Excuse Papa me. Hotel, Quebec, 05, taxi to gate, all seven, using taxiway Alpha 1, Alpha. Taxi into gate Golf 7 via taxiway Alpha 1 Alpha Papa Hotel Quebec 05. Alright, so we got our uh, taxi information Alpha 1 to Alpha. Alpha 1 is what we are on, then we're going to turn on to taxiway Alpha. I'm doing taxi to, to the ramp checklist. As you can see, I turned off my strobe lights, flaps came up, taxi lights are on. I'm going to keep my landing lights on just so I can see. Uh, elevator trim, we're going to have that set for takeoff. As you can see, that's why I was fighting it so much. I probably should have had the trim a little more lower uh, to have a nose-up trim for that landing. Uh, and I was kind of diving in and had to manually pull back on my yoke, and that's why it was not the greatest of a landing. I was not trimmed properly. So, uh, rule of thumb, always make sure that you are trimmed properly. Avionics and radios are set. Transponder, what we're going to do is we're going to turn that to 1200. Zero, zero. What I should have done is cancel my flight following uh, once I contacted uh, Duluth Tower, but I did not do that, so that was my bad. We are going to turn onto this taxiway here, which is going to be taxiway Alpha, which is going to take us the long, long, uh, entire runway length uh, journey to the gates, which are going to be, basically, you can see the tower over there, and the gates are a little past that. So that is where we are heading right now. As you can see, the sun is starting to come up. You can see that kind of reddish haze in the air. It would have been a really nice flight had, uh, you know, the weather cooperated with us. But that's sometimes what happens with flight. Sometimes weather can unexpectedly creep up on you, which it kind of did. Because, like I said, showing by what the radar was showing on my weather uh, generator and also by what the ATIS information was saying, we should have not had that weather. We should have been perfectly fine for our flight, but uh, the weather did not work out like that. And I am totally lost right now. I did not see something that was saying to turn, so I'm actually gonna hit my brakes, turn on progressive taxi, and I'm not gonna drive through the grass because that's silly gonna turn around our airplane I might have been talking and missed the taxi signs is what I'm assuming happened whoops all right I see where we need to go This must have told us that we needed to turn there, and I was not paying attention because I was talking, so that's what you call a fail again. This this flight is kind of turning out to be what not to do when flying. Do not do what I do. Alright, so we are basically heading uh, straight east now, and you can see how low those clouds are. Yeah, there's a little bit of an opening right there, but... Weather was definitely, again, not what it was supposed to be. So, company reputation is 
gonna be taking a little bit of a ding on this one, but we will uh, be all right with that. Because I would rather be safe than sorry. I don't want to be one of those airlines that pushes the limits, especially since we're just a small uh, kind of private airline where we do small GA aircraft. I, I definitely am not going to be flying through that kind of weather. Even if I was cleared IFR, I don't know if I would I would not go through that weather just because there is so much lightning and uh, the chances in chances for icing and extreme turbulence inside a thunderstorm like that is uh, a lot greater so safety first people safety first is what what we're going for I'm gonna start slowing down because I'm kind of booking it right now and we are gonna turn and land or not land, but park. Park is the, the term I was going for. I'm using progressive taxi because my flight when I got here, as you can see, there are not uh, gate markings on the terminal anywhere, so I don't know where I am. Control period to turn on my parking brake, and I'm going to go ahead and shut down my aircraft. So what I'm going to do is my shutdown checklist. Parking brake is on. Throttle is all the way to idle. Fuel pump, I never turned that on for my landing. Avionics switch is coming off. Taxi lights are coming off. Nav lights are coming off. Pedo heat is coming off. Mixture fuel flow is going to cut off. Magneto starter switch, we're going to put those all the way to the off position. Um, what is next? Beacon, I'm keeping that on. Landing lights are coming off, which should have been on. Panel lighting is going to be coming off in a second right now. And then my battery and alternator switches are coming off. So everything should be off. Securing aircraft parking brake is verified set, which you can see down here, and it is pulled out. Throttle is idle and all switches are off. So what I'm going to do is open up my cabin door and my passengers are going to deboard the plane and not be very happy. They're going to go, why are we at the same airport? Well, that's what you do. Instead of actually uh, cutting the video and bringing you in for the for the flight, what I am going to do is I'll probably just have this be a little uh, short episode of FS Passengers and uh, be an example of what not to fly in. So, if you were expecting a longer video, if you were expecting a long flight, I am sorry you did not get it because of the weather. It was not my fault, it was the weathers. I'm gonna end my flight. As you can see, they are uh, mostly uneventful apart from a few moments. Mode was realistic, so it's already uh, registered. My landing, according to this, was good. But again, uh, it was a smooth touchdown, but I was not happy with uh, kind of how inconsistent I was coming in. Passengers are angry because they didn't reach their destination, which I understand, and are relieved that they landed safely after the extreme weather they experienced during the landing. So, well, don't be angry then that you <laughs> did not fly through it. I only lost $650, so I will tolerate that. That is all right. Fuel cost, 15 pounds of fuel. Uh, you know, whatever. No cargo was uh, there. Company reputation, as you can see, it decreased. Overall, flight results were very bad. They are not happy. I didn't land at the... Ah, oh, maybe I should have declared an emergency. I, I don't really think you declare emergencies for weather, though. I might have to look into that. My uh, pilot school uh, remembrance is not there. It is considered bad practice to leave the landing lights on when you are on the parking ramp. So again, I was penalized for that, but I could not see because my taxi lights were not working. Uh, you had the wrong altimeter setting on landing. Again, how did I... I contacted the ATIS information. Ay ay ay! this game sometimes. Whatever. I don't care about my pilot penalties as much as long as uh, the passengers were safe. So they were. That was a terrible, terrible flight. As you can see, this is an example of what not to do. Ay.
that's all I have to say. So what I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close this video. Thanks a lot for watching. I will have another video that I'm going to be recording in about two minutes because I'm just going to do this flight again anyway, uh, where I am going to be going from Duluth to Houghton. And finally, dang it, I am going to get us there. So that is my plan. I will... Uh, Thank you for all watching this video. If you do have any questions or comments, definitely feel free to send me a message or a comment as I love to hear from all of you. Also, thanks again for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoy the videos, and I will catch you all next time.